Welcome back, everybody. We have Charlie Van Hecke in the house. Hey, Welcome to the show, Charlie. Thank you. Our in-house job seeker guru. Do you like that title? It works. <laughs> Good. Well, you have a lot of experience in sales, sales management, human resources even, right? Correct. And that sort of sets you on the path to sort of study top sellers over many industries. And I think that, that I find that fascinating. So I want to hear a little more about that. Well, I believe that job skills and attitudes transfer across all industries and that it really helps people in their relationships, not only at work, but also at home with their wife and children. And that I just think it's a positive psychology. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. Thank and you. so what, what did you find? Did you, was your theory correct? Well, a lot of times, like, I love this topic of motivation. And if you put other people first and you ask your wife, for example, what would you like, you can't really argue with her. That's what she wants. Can so you, you say that again? You can't <laughs> ask somebody what they want. <laughs> they argue with them. <laughs> and with your children, you know, one time that my son actually inspired part of that. And he said, Dad, your message would be great if it's a lot shorter. <laughs> so I Kids speak the truth. Shortened it right up. Very That's good. Amazing. You know, you hear all the time that, uh, well, I can't sell. I can't sell anything. You must, you must hear that and go, yeah, of course you can. You're doing it all the time. Like every conversation, mm. for all intents and purposes, you're selling something. I mean, how do, how do you approach people that simply say, I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. Well, the word can't is not a good word in the sales vocabulary. And I do notice a lot of negativism out in the market. I see a lot of views where I'm not sure if we can do this or I can't do that. I just refuse to accept the word can't. But most people have inherent communication abilities that go back to their childhood. A lot of people don't know this, but the baby of the family is often the best salesperson. Uh -huh. Because they had to talk their way into food and they watched how their brothers and sisters got the keys to the car. And <laughs> then when they get out in the corporate world, they're often top salespeople. I love that. It's, it's a lot of psychology, isn't it? It's a lot of psychology, but it's also about killing the part of you that's all about self-interest and being into other people. Because there's no way you can possibly listen, ask good questions, listen, and really empathize with where someone is if all you're worried about is yourself. That's a very good base to start from. I love that. And I, and I, I want to um, talk about a book that you're working on right now, Target 10 to Win. Correct. And uh, do I sound familiar to you? You do. Why do I sound familiar to you, Charlie Van Hecke? You sound familiar to me because you've done the voiceover for me <laughs> on my highlight video. And I love doing it because I love your program. And this book is attached to that website. Is that correct? That's it's correct. the same idea. So tell us, let's start with the book. It is an audio book. I'm, I'm fascinated by that. Tell me what you uh, intend to uh, accomplish and achieve with that book. What this is for is for job seekers, business owners, salespeople, sales managers, or organizations that want to increase business. And what I've noticed, a lot of retrenchment in this economy, where really we should be expanding. We really should be much more active and aggressive in the ways that we seek new business or seek new contact. In particular with today's young people, of course, teenagers are now called screenagers. <gasps> really? They are We're because so they're always on the screen, right? They're on oh Facebook, they're on their email, they're on uh, all the social networking sites. And yet, a lot of times you see them with their head down. Where in reality, we need more eye contact, we need more smiling, we need it more engaging, and more contact with people in order to reach our goals. So what are you going to do with the screenagers? This type of thing, an audio book? I mean, do you think that that's going to help with the screenagers? Well, I love today's young people. Most of the time, they don't have very much bias. They're, they're not a bigoted group. They're hardworking. They don't like to get up till about 10 o'clock in the morning. I call them the Red Bull generation. <laughs> but they work late, and that's what's great. And you're gradually seeing hours change in reflection of lifestyles. But what I try to do is every day I try to find two young people, and I ask them what their dream is. What are you going to do about it? And could you take two steps every day? If you took two steps every day towards your dreams, how many steps would you have taken at the end of the month? John, what would you say? 60. And yet it's actually exponential. Once you do two things, once you make two phone calls, two emails, two personal contacts, two networking, two referrals, all of a sudden so much activity is occurring that you can't keep up with it all, and you actually have to turn down business. Now, literally. I'm so busy that I was talking and I had to turn my phone off because I don't like to talk on the telephone in traffic. 
It's so dangerous. And yet, what do you see people doing? Texting. All the time. Is that real communication? Texting and traffic? Oh, gosh. Don't think so. I'm, I'm guilty of that, too, because I sit on my computer all day, and I'm doing 5,000 things at once, and then I get calls, and I'm not really, I'm half listening to the calls, and typing, you know, trying to do way too much at once. Maybe Absolutely. I should take your course. Maybe you should. <laughs> so your course teaches people to streamline and teaches them to, to start here and, to, and how to get to there. It really does. It gives them an action plan, but one of the heart of the method is something called the persuasion equation. And what it basically does is it takes motivation, it raises it to the second power. And then around it is the stimulus response. So it might be, John, I have an idea for you that could boost your profits, but at the same time make your sales force more effective. Could I come by and see you about that? Well, not, not today. But, uh... And that's exactly what happens because buyers are conditioned to say no. How many times do we do that when approached? And what I would say is, John, I completely understand when would be a good day to talk to you about boosting revenue? Uh, that's usually when I hang up. There you go. <laughs> and that happens too. Who doesn't want to boost revenue? I would yeah, say, I come know. on in, Charlie. That, it, that happens too. I would say, come it on is in. A percentage game. Right. right. So you just keep doing it until that person, until you get that person. Get to the next one. That's absolutely correct. Just it's hard to do. It's, it's, it must be hard to train someone to be able to t put it turn a blind eye to that. That's actually the toughest part. I call it the emotional intelligence of selling. How do you handle rejection? Huh. I was lucky. I was coached at an early age by my dad. And I was 13 years old selling newspaper subscriptions door to door. I went out and failed miserably. And he came back and he said, you got to stop selling home delivery and start offering them coupons and a way to educate their family. And I've never looked back. Oh my gosh. Wow. So you find out what their need is and approach it that way as opposed to what do I need to sell? Absolutely. What do they need to buy or receive? It's not, doesn't have anything to do with me and everything, it's everything to, do to do with, with them. them. I love that. Yeah, that is great. So you have a, a master's degree in human resources. That's correct. And how did, how did that translate? Well, what I discovered back in the late 80s and early 90s, and I'm dating myself a little bit, is that sales was shifting instead of being a product pushing salesperson really toward being a more educational based process where buyers want to become informed and want to make their own decisions. So I started learning adult education and cognitive processing and started looking at the ways that people are really buying now. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you're, you, you've won multiple top seller awards. So you're not just a guy that just decided one day, hey, I'm going to put this thing together and hope that it flies. I mean, you really know what you're talking about. And uh, it, one of your projects is sort of a competition of sorts, right? That I, I think that you should make into a, a reality show because I think it's, the idea is brilliant. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the, the, the competition side of Sales Trainer for you? Well, sure. A lot of times I'll come in front of people and I want to give them credit for what they already know. And John, you hinted at that a little bit earlier. A lot of people think they can sell. A lot of people think that they can't. So what I try to do is say, I want to recognize the fact that you already have inherent abilities. And throughout the course of the programs, I get a chance to compete against each other. But something very interesting happens. They get feedback from their peers, mm. which is more times than not much more effective than coming from myself. Some of the times it's videotaped. But what it really does, it gives people a chance to shine. And when they can shine, they carry that. I've actually was contacted over one of the LinkedIn recently by a guy who came in second. And he said, it still bothers me to this day. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Right. And that was part of a program that dated back to uh, a program where people are videotaped, they can watch themselves. And I asked him, do you still have the video? And he goes, yes, I do. I had it transferred to a digital format so he could save it and watch it from time to time. So people love to see themselves. And has he learned something from seeing? Because I know when, we, when we're teaching acting, we definitely videotape people. It's easier to point out what they're doing right or, or need to correct when they can watch themselves. So did he improve by Not watching? Not only did he improve, but he's now executive VP at a major ah! medical device company. And the, I'm actually calling him now. Oh my gosh, that's so great. <laughs> so it, it always pays to never burn a bridge. Yeah, and it obviously it makes you very happy to see people that you've, you know, you've enhanced their lives. Absolutely. Yeah, that must be a big, a big satisfying thing for yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely.